Tuesday. It is five past nine and I am the only one in the house. Phoebe uh, left the school at quarter past eight. Lilia is in college early today, so she left about 10 minutes ago and Dan left really early this morning because he's got an all day away day thing at work in London today. I'm hoping he'll be okay. He was up a lot in the night. Um, he is not well and we're beginning to think uh, that the GP is right and I think he may be having a relapse of his ulcerative colitis. Um, I was thinking I might try and share like during Vlogtober a little bit of our, our, our story with ulcer ulcerative colitis. Mine's a bit of a longer story uh, and a bit more dramatic uh, but anyone who's ever lived with such a thing will know how debilitating it can be. So we've got everything crossed that the medication he's now on will work. Uh, but none of us are sleeping very well because of it at the moment. So fingers crossed he has a good day. Anyway, I wasn't going to talk about that. I was going to talk about food. Just have a sip of my tea. I've got a really long list of things that I need to get done today. I made a list last night. Um, oh, we went to bed early last night. Hang on a minute. Okay. So everybody went to bed early last night. And as a result, I got a, about an hour more reading time than I normally would. So I finished my book. I finished uh, The Lollipop Shoes by Joanne Harris and uh, it took me so long to read it. And I also finished, on my audiobook yesterday, I finished The Thursday Murder Club. And I loved The Thursday Murder Club, absolutely loved it. I'd actually like to read it as well as having now listened to it. And I've got the next book in the series reserved on Borrow Box. Uh, the Lollipop Shoes was a long book and I'm not quite sure why it was as long as it was. I felt like the story could have been told in half the pages and I'm not sure I fully understood what happened at the end. <laughs> but that's probably just me. Um, and yeah, so I made myself a long list. So this is my list for Tuesday. Well, I've got to go shopping. That's not on my list. I'm doing all of the kids' bedding. I've got to look up drop spindling because I was trying to get back into drop spindling over the last couple of days and failing miserably. So I'm going to watch a few YouTube videos on that. I've got to do some podcast planning and notes because I've got to film a podcast next week for my knitting and crochet channel. Meal planning, I've just done for the week. So I like to shop, have a rough idea of the meals we're having throughout the week. So I just went through the freezer and had a bit of a clear out. And then I found a load of frozen sweet corn which we don't really eat anymore because we've kind of switched to tinned sweet corn which means I've got frozen sweet corn I need to use up so I thought I'd try and find a sort of corn chowder recipe so I started looking through my cookbooks and that has turned into a massive cookbook declutter and organise so I'm going to show you all my cookbooks that I've got and the decisions I'm making on them um, I've got to do some admin for the Strictly Sock Along on Instagram and Ravelry, catch up on my Ravelry messages. I've got nearly 200 Ravelry messages yeah. at the moment. I've got so behind on them and it's partly because of the way Ravelry messages work. I find it a little bit clunky and therefore I tend to avoid them. So I think what I'm going to do is try to set myself a target of reading and responding to maybe 10 a day until I've caught up. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I've got to call my stepmum because uh, I haven't heard from her in a while, just check she's okay, and um, choose my next audio book and order wetsuits. <laughs> so uh, we love paddle boarding and we want to keep doing it throughout the autumn and winter, but we're going to need wetsuits, so I want to look into that for the girls and I. But right now I'm going to show you my cookbooks. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the best angle, but it'll do. So first of all, we've got the Great British Bake Off Big Book of Baking. This is a really good book, but it's not mine, so I can't make a decision on it. I believe it was a present for Phoebe or Lilia one year, I can't remember. So I'm going to put that to one side and ask whoever the owner is if they wish to keep it. And I will also have a bit of a flick through it. Bake Off's on at the moment, so I'm feeling inspired. See if there's anything we might want to make. Then I've got Scandinavian Comfort Food. Um, this is a book I really love. Um, I've made a few of the recipes from it and love them, particularly the pastry based <laughs> recipes. And there's a lot of recipes in here that I've yet to try. You can see I've been going through it and putting my little notes and things. But I love this book just generally. I love the feel of it. I love the story of it. I love the photography in it. And I love uh, Scandinavian cooking and how different it is to let me just move Gordon Ramsay out of the way there how different it is to the way we cook in the UK 
and the recipes that I've tried in here so far have been so lovely. So this is definitely staying on my cookbook shelf. I'll try to link all the books that I talk about if I can underneath. My Daddy Cooks. I bought this way, way back in the 2000s, I think. It's by Nick Coffer, and I think he later went on to become a BBC radio presenter on ra local radio. There's a few recipes in here that we make quite regularly, and it's quite a small, compact book, so it doesn't take up too much room. So I think I'm going to hold on to it for a little while longer. I don't think... Oh, and also... It's adorable because look at the writing in there. June 2011. Oh, there you go. There's the date. It was for Father's Day. So Phoebe will have been about one years old. So Lilia would have written this and Lilia would have been about four, four or five. So it's so cute. So I think this is going to stay as well. There are a few. Uh, there's a pizza recipe, a risotto recipe and a couple of casseroles that we make relatively regularly or did and probably need to get back to doing. I wonder if he's got any sweet corn chowder recipes. No. Then I've got my two Joe Wheatley books. I will never get rid of these. The I don't know if it's coming across on camera but these are battered. Completely ruined. <laughs> it's a sign of a good cookbook. We use these books for everything and everything we make from these books comes out brilliantly. So Jo Wheatley is on Instagram. I think she was one of the first winners of the Great uh, British Bake Off, if not the first winner. And she now lives in Portugal, I think, Portugal. And she still talks a lot about baking. I'm not sure how readily available these books are, but if you can get hold of them secondhand somewhere, they are fantastic. We use them all the time. What I might do is get rid of the dust covers, which is what I did with my Atlas the other day, uh, because they're so battered that it looks better on the bookshelf to have them like that, doesn't it? But then they're gonna get even more battered. I don't know. What do you do about battered dust covers? because they exist for a reason to protect the book, but if they're beginning to make the books look absolutely scraggy and awful, is it better just to get rid of them? What's your verdict on the old dust covers? These two books are Phoebe's, and they're both cookbooks she had when she was little. And I'm gonna hold on to them because I still got cookbooks of this kind of genre from when I was a little girl. And they hold so much nostalgia for me that I wouldn't want to kind of eliminate part of her childhood memories for when she's older. So when she's older, she might choose to get rid of them, but uh, for now I'm gonna hold on to them because I know that there'll be some lovely memories in the pictures and the recipes in these books for her. This is Lilia's book and we use this quite a lot. So this is Tilly's Kitchen Takeover, which was a, a program, uh, I can't remember what channel it was on. Tilly, of course, is Gordon Ramsay's daughter and she was more recently a contestant on Strictly Come Dancing. We love Tilly. Uh, this book is brilliant. We've made a lot of the stuff from here. There's a really good burger recipe that Lilia loves to make. So this is staying, um, again, for partly because it's a good cookbook and partly because there's a lot of memories in here for Lilia. Madar Jaffrey's Ultimate curry, curry Bible, probably my most favourite, most used cookbook out of every cookbook I own. Um, again, it is a mess. It is totally ruined. It's stuffed full of things and notes and bookmarks. And I use this a lot regularly for different things, whether it's stuff we've adapted or make uh, exactly as the recipe. I love this book. I love the information about different curry styles from around the world. She really is the queen of Indian cooking and I love it. Oh, look how nice the book is. It's kind of iridescent. Oh, dust covers, thoughts. Not so pretty a book. <laughs> Joe Wicks, he's got quite a few of these Lean in 15 books. I can't remember when I got this, but it's definitely secondhand. I think I got it from eBay. And there are a few, a couple of recipes we make from here, like lunch recipes. 
And I had a little flick through it before I started to talk to you and thinking I was just gonna get rid of it. But there is actually quite a lot of stuff in here that's up my street. Um, the flavors, especially the Asian flavors, um, I wanna try. So I'm gonna hold on to this and maybe just go through it in the next couple of weeks and just make a couple of recipes that I fancy from there and see how we get on. Particularly the fish recipes uh, look really good good old Gordon. Everybody has to have a Gordon cookbook in their stash of cookbooks, don't they? Uh, I have had this one for a long time. Again, it's quite battered. Let's have a look at what it looks like without the dust cover. So much nicer. Comes with a CD of the original television program. We use this on and off. It's a really good staple cookbook for things like ways to prepare roast potatoes. I use it a lot and refer to it quite a lot at Christmas, different ways to prepare vegetables and so on. So I'm definitely gonna be holding on to this one as well. You're gonna laugh at this next one. <laughs> as you can tell, I've had this a very long time. My children are 16 and almost 12. Uh, and I use this mainly for one recipe only, and that is how to make cheese sauce the kind of cheese sauce you would make for macaroni cheese or put onto lasagna and I've actually written that recipe down on another piece of paper and stuck it on the back of one of my kitchen doors so I can just refer to it really easily so I don't actually know why I've still got this book so this I'm going to clean it up get rid of all my notes and then and clean up any sticky bits on the pages and so on and that's going to go to the charity shop so everybody I think has a couple of Jamie Olivers. I, I definitely had more than this. I, I did have a bit of a, a clear out more recently and got rid of a, a few Jamie Olivers. This was the first one that we had and I did think I was going to get rid of this but it's got such a good uh, section on pasta making which is something that Dan's really interested in trying at some point in the future. So I think I'm going to hold on to this one just because that is something we'll definitely want to try. And we, you know, we trust Jamie Oliver, even when he was young and baby faced. This one we're getting rid of, we've never used it. We've had it a long time. I think I went through it and put some notes. Let's see what I, so what have we got here? How to make turnips, yeah. Not really fun seeing that. So <laughs> I think, I'm, again, I'm gonna just wipe down any stains on it and this can go to the charity shop. Davina's five weeks to sugar-free. I use this a lot for one recipe. So I think I'm gonna go through this today and just see if there's any other recipes I want to try in here. The recipe I use from here is a savory recipe. It is for chicken soup and we just happen to really, really love it. Uh, but if that's the only recipe that I'm keeping the book for, then I will copy the recipe down somewhere else and the book can be cleaned up and go to charity. But I just want to go through and check if there's anything else I want to try in there because there are some really healthy looking recipes. Although it's five weeks of sugar free and there's a picture of a cake on the front, it isn't all baking and puddings. Um, over half the book is about savoury dishes, uh, which is the recipes that we use really. If you're going to have some pudding, might as well just have sugar in it and have less of it. Step by step Scottish dishes. I don't know why we have this, but it's always good to have a Scottish cookbook to refer to. I've got a couple of other ones as well. So, and look how small it is. It's like a magazine keeping that. Jason Vale, this is another eBay purchase. I bought a juicer and uh, a couple of years ago, I think during lockdown, and I really enjoy using it. I don't do it as much as I did. I prefer my, uh, my Nutribullet, my blender. But this has got some really good recipes for smoothies and juices. Uh, I'm gonna go through this just to see if I want to keep it or not. Uh, so that's gonna go in the maybe pile. It might end up at the charity shop. French women don't get fat by Muriel Grigliano. And I apologise for my terrible pronunciation. This is as far as I've got. That's my bookmark. And I've had it for ages. So that is going to the charity shop. I'm not interested in reading it. And I obviously never got very far with it. The French Women Don't Get Fat cookbook. I used to use a lot for a couple of breakfast recipes. So, and one of them I really adored. It was a... It was this one, Giovanna's MBC, and I can't remember what MBC stands for, 
but it's Greek yogurt and then flaxseed oil, which I used to replace with sesame oil because I just love the flavour of sesame oil. And then some ground nuts, honey and uh, finely ground oatmeal and the juice of clementines or orange. And I used to have that quite a lot and really enjoy it. So I might write that recipe down to keep that, but otherwise I've never used this cookbook. So that is going to the charity shop. This is a funny one. If you're Scottish, you will recognise this. <laughs> Mar Brown's or More Brown's cookbook. This was a gift from my cousin. And it's really funny in that More Brown is a character from the Ur Willy comic strips, uh, which is, I think, a pretty well-known uh, Scottish. I certainly remember it being popular when I was growing up and we used to visit my cousins and my family. And this is a cookbook and it's really well done. It's made to look like a kind of scrapbook of recipes and notes and it's interspersed with um, sections of the comic book from over the years. It's really good and it's written in Scots and I can't read half of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna see if my mum might like to have a look at it and, uh, and, and she might want it. And if not, it will go to the charity shop. Maybe there'll be a, uh, a Scottish person living down south who might get some enjoyment out of it. Charity shop pile. And then maybe and asking other people pile. And then just here is my keep pile. So that's quite a few books to be getting rid of, isn't it? Considering I've already done a bit of a clear out recently. So anyway, I hope that was fun to have a little look through my cookbook collection. I'm going to go and get on with editing yesterday's vlog. forgot to mention these ones that were on my kitchen counter. This is a relatively new one that was a gift from my friend Ali and it looks absolutely fantastic and it was such a gorgeous gift and the rep recipes in it are so good. We've yet to try them but there is a cake recipe in here that I really want to try so I might talk about that later in Vlogtober. The quick roasting tin is really good. We've made a few recipes from here and there's a few more I'd like to try. Veggie Chinese Takeaway is one of our favourite books. It's by Guok Lin Wan and we use a lot of the recipes from here. We really, really love the um, pot stickers. Really, really lovely. And the vegetarian cookbook was a present from my friend Gaynor and there's some really good dishes in here. Um, it was a gift because Phoebe was vegetarian for a while but we still eat a lot of vegetarian meals so I'm definitely holding on to this because there's some brilliant ideas and one of my most used books tiny little book favorite Scottish tea time recipes it's got things like treacle scones scotch pancakes which we make a lot dundee cake not such a fan because it's got lots of dried fruit in it Oatmeal, oatmeal gingerbread. Oh, I must make some of that. So yummy. And lots of other lovely recipes. So these are all on my kitchen work surface just because I use them quite often. cooking so excuse the sound of the microwave I had a quick look in this charity shop soup cookbook and it's come up trumps spicy corn chowder it actually says 340 grams of tinned sweet corn but we're just going to use the the frozen so that we can use it up so I'm gonna probably have I got all these ingredients onion I don't put celery in anything I don't believe in celery got carrots, got potatoes, sweet corn, chilli, red pepper, and we haven't got a green pepper, I've got orange, that will do. Uh, jalapeno peppers, yes, double cream now, I've got single cream, I'm sure that'll be alright. So I'm going to probably make that a bit later as well. I've also taken some apple out of the freezer, uh, and I'm going to make a crumble for later.
This is Audible. vlogger this afternoon. I got a little bit caught up in all the after school stuff. Dan uh, is not here this evening. He had to leave quite early this morning for a work thing and he won't be back uh, for another hour or two. Um, he did text me to say he's had quite a good day. His symptoms have been quite good so he's feeling all right and has actually gone out for a beer with colleagues um, which is good because he hasn't felt like doing anything like that. Uh, but I did get caught up in making the corn chowder um, which is looking good, although now I'm worried that I've got no room in the freezer to freeze it all. It made a lot more than I thought it would. So we might be eating soup for a couple of days. The girls are all fed. I've run Phoebe to trampolining and I've tidied the kitchen. Oh, and I made the apple crumble that I mentioned earlier as well. Let's see how we're doing with my list. Okay, this is a terrible angle and terrible lighting. I apologise. But I've got my list so we can have a little bit of a catch up. Look up drop spindling. Yes, I, and I think I filmed some of that as well. I have had a bit of success in that I um, took the very dodgy bit of spinning I had started quite some time ago and then Phoebe added two and then I added two for practice. I got it off the spindle, I divided it in two and I applied it. And it actually looks quite cool. Like, almost like very dodgy but like yarn. So I think now what I need to do is put it, make it into a skein and soak it to set the twist, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I just like how it looks on here, to be honest. So yes, a tick. Pod planning and notes. No, I haven't done that. Um, I did my meal planning, hence ending up making uh, corn chowder and sorting through a million cookbooks. I haven't caught up on any of my Strictly Sock Along admin because I it, the editing took longer than I expected. I've now got this to wang about. Uh, I haven't done my Ravelry messages. I did call my stepmom. We had a lovely long chat. She's going to pop by next week so we can uh, catch up in person. I've done all the kids' bedding, which reminds me I need to go and get the rest of it out the tumble dryer. And I did my cookbook declutter. I haven't ordered wetsuits and... I chose my next audio book. Um, I wasn't prepared to wait for the free version on BorrowBox, so I used one of my credits on Audible, and I am already on chapter five of the second book. I'm very excited, but I need to choose my book for tonight. So, but I'm gonna say good night, because I think I, I rabbited on quite a lot earlier about cookbooks, so I'm gonna go and put the chickens to bed. Well, they put themselves to bed. Am I really blurry for all of that? I'm sorry if I was. So I'm gonna go and put the chickens to bed, then tidy up, then at some point go to bed and choose my new book and I will see you <laughs> tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much again for your comments. Thank you for the likes. Don't forget to hit subscribe and thank you for the people that have made Kofi donations and also the, the thanks button. That means such a lot, so thank you. Uh, right, I'm gonna go and see to the chickens. Just to be clear, I'm not using this as a weapon on the chickens.